There are lots of things to enjoy when having a garden. The most obvious one being the flowers and the scents, but also nature. Nature brings an added layer to that enjoyment in the garden. For one, being pollinators. Pollinators are exquisite. There's a number of pollinators that come into the garden. When you have plants like this, like this Esperanza right here, very popular in Southern Texas. It has that trumpet, so it allows those pollinators to extract the nectar from it. That's how you attract many, many pollinators. But there's one pollinator in particular, or I wouldn't even say a pollinator, a feeder in particular that I love, and that's the hummingbird. Another very popular plant that attracts pollinators and hummingbirds as well is this right here, Meteor Shower Verbena. Now this is a Verbena bonarensis. It grows upright and it's easily accessible for all the pollinators, especially hummingbirds, where they don't have to go so low into the ground. This is nice and high, and they'll definitely feed off of this one. There are also annuals that you can use to attract pollinators and hummingbirds as well. For instance, this low trailing verbena that we have here. Now this is a peachy keen verbena. It trails, it's low mounding. Now here in Texas, we can get away with it being a perennial. For most of you guys, it's gonna be an annual, but you can find these verbenas in an assortment of colors. This one here is sparkling amethyst. This is peachy keen. Both very beautiful colors and the pollinators definitely love this stuff. Hummingbirds are attracted to this stuff. And of course there are other annuals that attract pollinators like petunias such as this one. This is Supertunia bubblegum. And we have some other ones here, Supertunia persimmon. Um, all very attractive to pollinators. All right, and for all my Texas gardeners who are looking for probably the most attracted pollinator plant here, is the salvia. Salvia is one of those that's gonna attract pollinators all year round, especially in Southern Texas, where they just continuously bloom and they have maybe a die down period of what, a month in the winter. This is one of those plants you're gonna wanna put in your garden if you're looking to attract hummingbirds, butterflies, bees, all types of pollinators. Okay, so we can go on and on about talking about pollinator plants because just about any plant can definitely be a pollinator attractor. But why am I talking about this? The reason I'm talking about this is because, like I mentioned before, one of my favorite things to see in the garden is nature. That's birds, whether you have a bird bath, a bird feeder, um, whatever the case is to attract nature. Um, it's one of those things that I enjoy most about the garden. And one of, the, one of those things that I enjoy the most is probably the hummingbird. The hummingbird is such a beautiful little creature, one of the smallest birds. They're very acrobatic and they're fun to watch. Now. You can attract hummingbirds with a lot of things. Even the roses that we have in the garden, those can attract hummingbirds. But I'm showing you mainly the ones that are really gonna attract them and the ones that they're really gonna be attracted to. We have other things like daylilies. Now daylilies here in the southern areas of the states are one of those that hummingbirds are definitely attracted to because they make their trip from Mexico all the way up north and they stop along eating from those daylilies. Um, so that's one of the things we do have in the garden. We'll have some of those popping up here, um, maybe early summer, depending on how hot it gets here. Um, but definitely a lot of things that you can plant to attract those pollinators. Now, for those of you that don't have a bigger garden or want to see pollinators in the garden, such as hummingbirds, I got something for you that I wanna show off today. Okay, so what I have here is a smart hummingbird feeder with a wireless camera from Solium. Now, this might be a little bit cheating without the pollinating plants, but hummingbirds are very heavy feeders. They eat almost every 10 to 15 minutes, and I wanna provide them with as much food as possible, especially when they're making that trip from the southern area up to the northern area. This is gonna give them their the nutrients that they need uh, to perform that flight, and they waste a lot of energy. So the other plus to this is I'm gonna be able to look at them with a camera from a distance. I don't have to be out here with my actual camera waiting patiently because that's something I like to do. I'll pull up a chair, have some coffee, and I'll sit here for anywhere from 20, 30 minutes to an hour just trying to catch a glimpse of a hummingbird to get that great photo. But with this, I'll be able to keep an eye on them from distance and enjoy them without bothering them so much. All right, so what we have in here, obviously, are the manuals. How to put it together and how to get it going. Now, I've actually already opened this because I had to charge the camera. All right, so you get a few things here. You have one box here that has uh, two cleaning brushes and an antenna. Now, the cleaning brushes are very essential because you wanna keep your hummingbird feeders clean. Whether it's one of these or just one of those you buy at the store, you wanna keep it very clean. That way they don't get any type of bacteria or infections. Uh, and, and that's almost every time you change out the uh, the liquid. Then you also get another box that has a hanging hooks, 
um, more feeding ports and a C, uh, USB-C cable to charge this with the reset pin as well. Now, the good thing about this is when I checked it earlier, it comes with a SD card already. So it's already saving all your footage as well. So real quick, just to show you, it comes with the camera here. The camera pops out easily. This is the camera right here. You have a charging point port there. You have another optional charging port up here with the SD card and the power buttons right there as well. Then you have this little connector right here for the antenna. Now this camera just slides right back in here just like that. And that's what it looks like. You have the feeding tubes here and it comes with some replacements as well in this box. Then you have the stand here. Now this is easy to just snap in there like that. And that's where the hummingbirds will perch themselves to feed. All right, so I've opened everything up just so I can show you exactly what everything uh, looks like and what it comes with. Now this is one of the cleaning brushes, very good size cleaning brush, a very thin one to clean the feeding ports as well. Again, very important to keep these around to be able to clean that and keep it as clean as possible. You have the antenna that it comes with that easily screws onto the back here. And then like I said, it has some replacement feeding ports. You have yellow, blue. It already has the red ones on here. I think we're gonna go ahead and keep the red ones as well. You have the USB-C charging cable, and then you have the hanging hook here as well that attaches right to the top here. The first thing I wanna do before I put any nectar in there or hang it up is I wanna connect to the camera. So the first thing I gotta do is I gotta pull out my phone here and I gotta download the app. Now there's a QR code here that lets you download the app. We're gonna go ahead and do that. Now, once I have my app, I'm gonna go ahead and sign up for a new account, obviously, because I don't have an account. All right, once you set up your account, it's gonna ask you for verification. You put in all your information and you'll get access. And it'll tell you, congratulations, you have successfully registered. Please add a device. Now, what we wanna do to add the device is we wanna take the camera out, open up that top portion that I set and hold the power button down and you'll hear some audible tones. There you go, and then it has a little blue light blinking right there in the front, that tells you it's ready to connect. So I'm gonna put that right back into the bird feeder there. Add a device here, make sure your Bluetooth is on. It's gonna ask you if you heard the sound or saw the light, hit next step, hit allow so it connects to your feeder there. It's gonna ask you for your Wi-Fi password. Connection succeeded. Okay, and with that sound right there, it tells you that it has been connected. The phone's also telling me connection succeeded. Now it's gonna to get to set a name and location of the device. I'm gonna leave it as smart, actually it says smart camera, but we're gonna put hummingbird camera. And it says location. Now you have an option of locations here. I'm gonna put garden on there. Now it says to place it where you want it and check the Wi-Fi signal to make sure the strength is good. Now I'm all the way over here. This is not where I'm gonna have it. I'm actually gonna have it closer. So I'm gonna say the connection is good and go to next step. And then how do you plan to use your device? Plug in, solar panel, or battery power only. So I'm gonna use battery power only. Now you can, it gives you the option to get a month of uh, cloud storage. So I'm not gonna go ahead and do a cloud storage because I'm just basically gonna pull that SD card. You can definitely do the cloud storage so you can check on that, but I'm gonna just pull it off the SD card. And it's already telling me motion detected because my hand's right here and it's picking that up as well. All right, so now it's gotta do some updates. I'm gonna let it run through the updates real quick. All right, so while I'm waiting for that update, I'm gonna go ahead and open the hummingbird feeder from the bottom and I'm gonna fill it with our nectar here. Put the bottom back on there like so. And we're gonna go ahead and flip it upside down. There we go. Okay, firmware is updated successfully. I've put in my nectar here, nice and sticky now. Now it has a little basin up here where you can put some water just in case you have any insects climbing down the hook here. They'll pretty much drown in the water before they get to the nectar there. Let's go ahead and set this up now in a spot where I think all these hummingbirds are gonna be coming to because I've already seen them close to the kitchen garden. All right, so hummingbird feeder is up. Hopefully we get some of those hummers to come around so we can get some 
awesome footage of them. Um, like I said, it's, it's uh, kitchen gardens just right here and I have those savias that are not planted just there that I showed earlier on video. And they're definitely coming around to that. They're coming to this area to look for food. It's a nice area here to fly through. So most of them trek through here. So I'm assuming they're gonna stop here to have a bird feeder as well. And that's where the birds are actually feeding from. But I think this is a great spot for it. We may move it later on in the garden once we have some daylilies come up and some other annuals or perennials coming up in different areas, we might find that it's a better location somewhere else later in the garden. But for now, I think this is a good spot underneath this tree canopy right here. Gives them some shade, some time to rest, sit here, get a drink of that nectar. But um, it's an awesome feeder. Um, you can find it in the description below where you can actually get one like this. Um, it's awesome that it's able to connect to the Wi-Fi, so you can actually pick up some of that footage. And it has an SD card that you can scrub every once in a while whenever you find that there's some footage happening, you'll get the notifications on your phone letting you know, hey, there's motion detected. I'm feeling it right now because I'm standing right by it, but it'll tell you, hey, there's motion detected and you can keep an eye and maybe pull off some of that footage before the race is over. It shouldn't race over. I, I don't think it'll go off too many times unless there's actually a hummingbird feeding on it. But there you go, guys. Just wanted to show you guys uh, one of the better things uh, in the garden to enjoy, and that's definitely nature, pollinators. My thing is the hummingbirds. I love taking photos. I love coming out here with the camera and taking photos of these birds, not just hummingbirds, but other birds alike. But hummingbirds are definitely one of those unique specimens that's awesome to see in the garden because of their acrobatic skills and just how fast they are and how beautiful some of them look. So hope you enjoyed it. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.